welcome friends to this health economics uh, module of uh, NPTEL. I am sure so far it has been you know um, uh, useful for you to understand uh, how risk is uh, attached with healthcare or uncertainty is attached with healthcare. However, risk is dealt with some you know quantification of uh, the measures uh, which addresses the extent of uncertainty. We discussed in the previous lecture about um, different type of risk and how um, the risk parting is indeed uh, paying a different average utility with effort to the context of uh, the expected utility theorem of uh, Bernheimer and Morgenstern, where uh, we tried our best to understand uh, whether the, you know the person should actually bear the risk or to you know averse the risk. Uh, and then in which way it has to be discussed. Uh, now we are going to discuss about um, patient you know, payments, how out of pocket as we know is one of the important aspects of the patient payments. However, we will be emphasizing each of the directions of uh, patient payments. <coughs> there are indeed uh, different uh, sources of funding in different uh, countries, 10 to 15 percent uh, uh, are, are, are the funding sources in uh, uh, northern Europe and more than 50 percent in poor countries so far as you know patient payments are concerned. And um, there are uh, indeed you know lack of institutional arrangements in poor countries. Hence you know source of funding really matters. Uh, especially in less developing or 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 or, or, or underdeveloped countries, uh, there are arguments in you know, f f in in favor to the you know patient payments as well that uh, the public you know poor cannot afford to pay for all healthcare, um, and uh, unnecessary you know demand will be deterred when people pay for themselves like you know such as moral hazard which we are also discussing in different uh, units. Uh, we have already discussed uh, the issues of moral hazard. Uh, however, the unnecessary demand for healthcare or over demand of healthcare can also be checked when you know patients payments are from their own pocket. And um, then the third aspect of uh, the patient payment is on effects of patient payments. Some of the um, uh, findings of different ex experiments were discussed in our different uh, units. We have uh, carefully mentioned about RAND health insurance experiment. Uh, please refer to the unit number 2 uh, where in the chapter called demand uh, in healthcare. We have uh, carefully emphasized RAND health insurance experiment where co-payment you know, uh, reduces total uh, or, or the quantity demanded. Uh, demand for unnecessary you know, health care was not reduced any more than the demand for necessary health care. And uh, then the third aspect of this experiment is on demand was reduced more among poor people than rich people and particularly among the children of poor people. Please refer to this unit number 2 for further clarification on the RAND experiment related to patient payments. Then in a structure we will clarify how payments by the patients are made uh, either you know uh, patient pay through you know uh, insurance or through no insurance if it is a no insurance case either it might be a possibility of cross subsidization through you know the different income quintile groups you know pay uh, differently, hence it is uh, a cross subsidizing to the you know, less income people or the through the patient payment where insurance is not there or the patient is actually directly paying and in case of cross subsidization there might be a possibility of no patient payment. And uh, in another case is through insurance where uh, the patient is indeed not paying at the point of access and the premiums are actually paid before. So, patients still pay some administrative cost and may you know say a, a cost involved in insurance. Insurance may not cover the whole set of health cares. We will discuss uh, you know in detail all about these 
uh, soon. So uh, then what are the different types of patient payments? There are broadly four, one is called out of pocket expenditure, then another is called co-payments, third one is called deductibles and fourth one is called co-insurance. So out of pocket expenditure where the money paid directly by households at the point of receiving you know, health care, this occurs when services are neither provided free of cost through a you know, government health facility nor is the individual covered under any public or private insurance or social protection scheme. So it is basically the, the spending from the pocket of the consumer and that is not covered by either insurance or by any public institutions. Co-payments, co deductibles and co-insurance, there are some cost sharing plans. Uh, you know, uh, cost cost sharing plans, so which are actually you know co-payments co and or or sometimes through deductibles and and co-insurance, okay, and uh, both way both will actually address to the issues of uh, cost sharing. It might happen that you know co-payments once co-payments are made, then we can uh, discuss about their deductibles and co-insurance. Uh, co we'll discuss all these things one by one. Co-payment uh, which refers to a fixed amount uh, or, or the percentage of an approved medical bill that needs to be paid by the insured. The remaining amount will be settled by the insurer. Okay? So the, therefore it is called co-payment and uh, if the total treatment cost is of rupees you know 50,000, co-payment uh, is of uh, you know 10,000 that is precisely of 10 percent of the total uh, treatment cost and uh, you know payment uh, patient pays finally of 10,000 that is uh, and uh, and if uh, and uh, insurer pays actually 40,000. So out of the if, if 10 percent is the you know uh, co-payment accordingly we can find out the, the respective share and uh, so far as deductible is concerned it refers to a fixed uh, sum payable by the in insured towards medical expenses. Once this sum runs out, the insurer will start pitching in and uh, cover medical expenses up to the sum insured. Uh, so let us say you are availing you know medical treatment of over you know, 50,000 and rupees 7,000 is the defined deductibles sum as per your policy, then you just need to pay 7,000 from your pocket. And the remaining 43,000 will be actually contributed by your health insurer, right? That is called deductibles. And uh, then deductibles might cover the base or it is might it is through the top up, okay? So there are two types of deductibles. One is the base cover deductible or top up deductibles. So in case of base cover, a fixed amount is actually payable by the insured out of the total medical bill. And in case of top, top up, a, you know, top up cover is sold on top of the base covers of the sum assured or insured. Here, the top up sum insured trigger once the base sum insured is exhausted. Hence, the base cover uh, sum insured is uh, referred as deductible. Then, what is coinsurance? Uh, coinsurance is similar to co-payment. Uh, coinsurance is a fixed percentage of the medical bill that needs to be paid from the side of the insured. The remainder amount will be borne by the insurer. However, this clause usually comes into play only after deductible has been paid. Uh, Let us say you are availing of uh, medical treatment of that is 50,000 rupees with you know 7,000 is deductible and 20 percent is coinsurance. Uh, so, once the deductible is paid, the sum will come down to 43,000, then 20 percent of that amount which is of 8600 rupees 8600 will have to be paid by you and the remaining 34,400 will be paid by the insurer. Let us uh, understand further by this uh, you know Q and A question answer, is a copay the same as coinsurance? In that case, you may have to pay both co-payment and insurance and uh, do uh, co-pays count towards deductibles. You might not need to pay co-payment until you hit your deductible. So we need to check the uh, insurance plan terms carefully. Now we are presenting how insurance company and their uh, you know um, details are actually provided. 
here is a sample uh, health insurance uh, ID card. This gives so many informations and uh, we are referring to a standard card of the western countries and uh, we are mentioning when the, the names are actually mentioned we start with the ID and their contact number details and uh, here they mention about uh, you know copay for their visits and also uh, about um, copay for visits to primary care uh, provider and uh, specialty care. So, primary care and uh, primary care provider and specialty care provider, the copay uh, amount is, is written. And they also uh, mention about copay for visits to emergency and uh, urgent care. So, clear uh, percentage or the amount is uh, mentioned. And here is primary care and specialty care details are given. And uh, then the uh, they also clarify about uh, whether you are purchasing for generic or the branded one. So, uh, and, and, and the, the plan accordingly and um, they specify about uh, the amount that is uh, in network and out of network deductibles and their co-insurance. So, in stand for out of network and uh, you know in network is mentioned and their deductibles etc clarity uh, are indeed given and in along with that emergency helplines are also presented in the card itself. So uh, now again uh, regarding patient payments we have start discussed about uh, different uh, you know um, types of patient payments however it has distributive implications uh, high elasticity of demand for uh, healthcare among poor than rich and uh, the deductive the reduction in you know quantity demanded is uh, higher among the poor than the rich. Uh, we are now uh, citing the, the uh, example as you know two boys that are rich and poor with the same disease and need for same you know pediatric healthcare. Now demand curve for poor is indeed you know relatively you know flatter whereas that is that is you know more sensitive to the price which already we said and uh, that is at, uh, at, at, at P equal to 0 utilization is same which you already said they start with a same level of pediatric health care that is XP equal to 0 we are referring to this point and uh, where is the reach and its sensitivity is, is, is different that is fairly relatively inelastic. So, the, there will be you know excess uh, the excess demand is bigger for poor than rich. So, there will be hence you know there will be you know welfare loss by, by a payment structure equivalent to the market. The, they are paying this uh, in fact their willingness to pay will be of this much for the rich uh, for the poor and uh, for the rich will be it is different however they are in fact you know paying the t this is p times you know x okay or uh, uh, usually we say p times q so the since the welfare loss for the for the you know market based uh, approach at, at p equal to mc will be of the bigger triangle area and for the reach it will be of the small uh, triangle area <coughs> okay so now um, the excess demand is bigger for poor, poor and then the reach um, to deter excess demand co-payments is introduced to understand uh, the, 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 the excess demand. Uh, so, co-payment uh, structure we have introduced for poor XP uh, is equal to 0 and uh, at XP equal to 0 we start with uh, you know the, the, the poor is um, you know X, X uh, 1 and uh, and we again with x equal to 0 we start with x1 for rich. Now uh, further to get rid of all welfare losses payments are increased. Initially we said uh, that you know if if, uh, if uh, there is uh, you know a market based you know, payment then there are huge welfare loss. To reduce the welfare loss we, we started with uh, discussing some form of uh, co-payments 
Okay, so we are now discussing co-payment, co so there there will be some distributive implications. Uh, to get rid of all welfare losses as of the market based uh, uh, no, evaluation. Uh, so, the uh, the two is um, the however the optimal point is actually x you know uh, the at, at for the market one will be x star poor and x star rich. This is basically the one which we have discussed. The excess demand depends on people's ability to pay. Okay. And uh, now, <coughs> uh, now uh, when uh, the, 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 in the there are uh, positive prices, uh, okay, uh, the way if P, P increases, demand falls, and uh, there will be negative prices, and where you know P uh, P increases, uh, demand also increases. This is uh, receiving you know monetary uh, premiums for seeking healthcare. And this works well for the poor. More details you can find out uh, in our um, uh, unit number seven. Some of the discussion we are going to make it further. And uh, and and an ideal, you know, the demand we are mentioning to distinguish these two, we are in fact clarifying this through the individual demand curve and social demand curve. Here in the equation, we are trying to mention about. Uh, about the x1 uh, that is uh, quantity consumed if patient were to pay everything out of pocket and uh, you know x p equal to 0 that is quantity consumed if he provided completely free okay and um, x star which you have already highlighted is basically the optimal quantity consumed where uh, marginal social marginal valuation is equal to the social cost so, uh, and uh, EB is our external benefit to reach optimal quantity consumption individual would have to receive a premium equal to the difference between uh, the MC and EB. Okay. So, uh, the negative patient payments on vaccinations may prove to be an effective way of reaching uh, the target population and further on this you can refer to our unit number 7. We have discussed, uh, we are discussing on uh, the difference between uh, the you know, marginal social valuation uh, in the context of individual and, and individual and, and, and in case of demand for social valuation and demand at the individual valuation for healthcare. So, other aspects uh, such as uh, reimbursement are also important. This uh, relates to uh, way in which healthcare providers are paid for their uh, uh, health services. Uh, the methods of reimbursements are respect, uh, maybe you know of uh, retrospective reimbursement or prospective reimbursement. So, retrospective reimbursement means you know hospital receive payment in full for all healthcare expenditure incurred in some pre-specified period of time. There are two uh, models we are presenting, one is called actual cost model, another is called free for service FFS based. In that case, in case of actual cost model, hospital income depends on workload and the actual cost incurred. So, R stands for, R, this is what is mentioned, R stands for total reimbursement which is equal to the workload times the average cost of the services provided per care or per case and uh, whereas in case of free for service, it is basically uh, you know W into S into I, W stands for the workload. Uh, that case that is basically number of cases treated times uh, the number of services provided per case and uh, I stands for P per item of service. In case of uh, the prospective you know reimbursement payments are uh, you know agreed in advance okay. but in the retrospective one full for all healthcare expenditure incurred in some pre specified period of time. So, in case of prospective one as I already said uh, the advance payment is uh, payments are agreed in advance and are not directly related to actual cost incurred and uh, this, this involves you know payment is not related to actual cost, incentive to reduce actual cost and need for monitoring the quality of care which is part of the prospective reimbursement. And uh, it requires uh, diagnostic related groups, DRG pricing scheme in, uh, I mean there are some examples we are actually referring here such as you know DRG scheme, pricing scheme introduced in 1984 
uh, into the Medicare system in USA. DRG payments are based on average cost per case in um, each diagnostic group derived from the sample of hospitals. So, this is basically evaluated through diagnostic you know, related groups DRG. Total reimbursement to the hospital is basically on R equal to W times the diagnostic related groups. So, where DRG is uh, sorry, DRG is DRG based prospective payments. So, diagnostic related groups versus average cost, uh, we are again clarifying it. Uh, effect of uh, prospective DRG based payments is the case uh, when DRG is less than that of the average cost, hospitals will reduce the average cost until DRG is equal to the average cost that means hospitals have incentive to minimize cost. And if it is just the reverse then hospital will uh, increase cost until DRG is equal to average cost. So, this means that the uh, you know, hospitals will spend more on amenities to improve their competitive position in market. So, cost shifting and patient shifting etc. Um, is also discussed in the context of distinguishing you know diagnostic uh, related groups or versus average cost. Um, in this case uh, the to circumvent the uh, cost minimizing effect of DRG pricing by shifting patients and some services provided to patients out of DRG pricing schemes and into other parts of system not covered by DRG pricing. And DRG uh, creep is the one where uh, when hospitals classify cases into DRGs that carry a higher payments. These are some of the examples usually discussed. And now we are discussing types of health insurance plans. Um, so, um, uh, in India, Indian context, uh, these are like individual based or self insurance based, then, uh, then family floater that is entire family uh, based plans, senior citizen plans, it is usually above 65 years, critical illness plans, uh, illness with uh, expensive treatments, group uh, plan for a group of employees, etc. Top off when the sum insured of the you know existing policy gets exhausted, then some other plan called ULIP, unit linked insurance plans. That's basically called investment plus health cover. We need to refer to the um, uh, the policy making body or, or related to insurance. It's none other than IDI. Uh, that's Insurance Regulatory and Development uh, you know Authority of India. It's, this is a statutory body under the jurisdiction of uh, Minister of Finance, Government of India. The body tasked uh, or body tasked with uh, you know regulating and licensing the insurance and reinsurance uh, industries. This was established in 1999 uh, with the Act, Special Act called IRDI Act 1999, and the head office is situated in Hyderabad, India. It has different duties, powers and functions. This has duty to regulate, promote and you know uh, ensure orderly uh, growth of insurance business and the insurance business. This satisfies you know insurance companies, then protect the interest of the policy holders and adjudication if any related to some disputes out of insurance. Some other details related to insurance is compulsory versus voluntary insurance. Voluntary uh, is usually costly to you know manage and uh, involves inequitable access to healthcare and premium is based on individual rating uh, that is you know higher individual risk means higher premiums to be paid where compulsory uh, insurance based on community uh, you know removes these shortcomings of voluntary insurance. It ignores the variations in individuals risk so far as compulsory insurance is concerned. And we discuss about uh, redistribution uh, perspective as well. Uh, redistribution wise, uh, you know, like you know, from low risk groups to high risk groups uh, based on the uh, you know health condition, and also redistribution channels are through you know high income to uh, you know, to the low income groups. And uh, there are two different ways of organizing you know revenue collections in insurance. We'll also discuss this uh, in unit number seven. That's Precise on social health insurance and taxation. Uh, then uh, you can compare the uh, three uh, categories uh, in terms of different indicators uh, that, is, that is private health insurance, social health insurance, and taxation based 
provisions. Here uh, we are discussing about the important characteristics of three uh, different uh, health insurance schemes mentioned in Olsen in 2009 work and rest of the details like economy show health system etc are uh, dealt in unit number 7. Uh, on cost perspective, uh, private insurance is expensive, social insurance uh, you know it, it varies uh, between insurance companies and taxation base is usually you know cheap. Similarly, coverage, you know, choice of participation, cross subsidization, etc. You know, uh, where in private health insurance scheme, uh, there is no cross subsidization, but in other case, there are. Uh, regarding sources of funding, uh, in case of private, it is indeed uh, called individual. In case of social, it is payroll. And related to access, uh, it is the income in case of private health insurance, where it is in the social health insurance, it is based on need and taxation base it is also need. And link between size of uh, own contribution uh, and uh, own expected uh, use, yes there are also differences. You can find the um, readings very carefully and we have tried our best to simplify private insurance where the, uh, link between you know your own contribution and expected uh, use is there, where in other two there, 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 there is hardly any relationship. Similarly, other points, uh, 7, 8 points we have carefully you know addressed. There might be you know some questions, I am sure it will be useful, is not it? And uh, um, after uh, covering these two lectures on uh, uncertainty risk and uh, the financial structures for the households, I think uh, you need to read Olsen and even another we have cited on um, Perlov uh, in, in uh, 2011. Uh, published work in, and uh, that will be you know uh, quite useful for your uh, study. In our uh, next lecture, um, we will discuss on the problems associated with uh, insurance such as moral hazard and arbor selection. I think that is um, uh, very clearly addressing the challenges of with the health insurance uh, providers. So, rest um, will be understood in detail I think in between please go through and try to solve problems and can, you know, ask your questions, we will be happy to address it. Thank you.